Yes, welcome to Principles of Pharmacology and Toxicology. This is by Clark Alteric, Lecture 6. And I'll be taking you through medicinal plants that are used in Uganda and East Africa. For example, here we see the aloe. Aloe, this is aloe vera. It contains glycosides. It's called Vanonia amygladis, misused to treat various diseases and conditions within livestock. Like in Uganda, almost in every region, this plant is common and it's commonly used for medicinal purposes. Uh, if we are talking about medicinal plants in Uganda and East Africa, then reminding ourselves about Ethnobotanical survey is important. In, ethno, in ethnopharmacology, we conduct ethnobotanical survey to find out various disease, diseases in various regions or communities and which medicinal plants or natural sources are being, being used to treat such diseases or healing conditions that affect various livestock. For example, here in this photo, man in a cave an ethnopharmacologist, he conducted an example of an ethnobotanical survey and he was trying to find out which drugs are being used to treat animals within this Karamoja region. And these drugs should be mainly from the nature. Here we see a man, this should be taken in Uganda, within, it's, a, it's just like a herbal garden, and this is Vanonia. Melagiadis, which is aloe vera. These, are, these two communities, this is Maasai in Kenya, and these are pastoralists purely. They based on livestock for their survival. In their regions, it's difficult to access these veterinary drugs, and the only solution to treat in such conditions is by use of these natural drugs. It's the same as here, we see some drugs here, then there are the pharmacologists in the community trying to record some that are used. For you to conduct an ethnobotanical survey, you must go down to the community, discuss with the elders, because these elders have this have got this knowledge on how to treat various diseases and conditions of these animals. They pass this knowledge from generation to generation, so it's really important. Because of Cultural erosion, we shall find out that these drugs, these natural plants, will undergo, are facing various challenges. For example, we have the population is increasing, there is pressure on resources like land, and some of these drugs will go extinct, hence, there is a need for us to document them. Uh, we define disease as a state from the normal deviation, so it's a state of ill health. And we have various diseases affecting various systems. For example, we have those that, that, that affect the nervous system, we have those that affect the respiratory system. For example, we say CBPP, pneumonia, CCPP. We have those that affect the intergenital system or the skin. For example, we have ringworms. We have those that affect the digestive system, the GIT. Different diseases affect different systems and affect different animals or livestock. In Uganda, most of the diseases that the common diseases in Uganda are caused by the parasites. These parasites are divided into two. We have the ectoparasites, then we have the endoparasites. The ectoparasites live through these live on the external part of the body. For example, we have the ticks. The ticks are external parasites, they live outside the animal body. We have the lice, we have the mice, we have the flea, we have the nozzle boot, these are live inside the nostrils. And it's always the lava. We have the sister fly that causes blood sucking, then the vector the topansomes that cause topansomiasis. Other parasites 
data external we have the stable fly you have the honey fly and really these affect the animals that are always grazing in this photo we can see here we have the ticks this is the brown ear tick that is known for trans for vectoring east coast fever we have the mites this always cause what they call the scaly leg the scaly leg they also burrow into the animal skin. We have the lice, which are blood suckers. We have the flea. This causes irritating reactions. We have the nasal butterfly that affects sheep and then the camel. To start with the ticks, in Uganda East Af and East Africa at large, ticks are the major external parasites that affect livestock ticks suck blood causing anemia the animals will be anemic these ticks are of veterinary importance because they vector various diseases they vector the tick bone diseases for example we have east coast fever east coast fever is caused by the red ear papa papa but it is vectored by the red ear tick east coast fever is severe in young animals the signs you will see there's lacrimation, there's high temperatures, bracket fever, which is always photo one and above. Then there are solid lymph nodes always. Regions of people within Uganda, they use various medicinal plants to treat East Coast fever. The other, the other disease that is vectored by the ticks is the heart water. Heart water is vectored by the Amblyoma variangatum, which is a nice looking tick. It causes various skin signs, and we see hot water results into some signs that affect the sheerness. Remember, it says that the animal will be moving in cycles. The other vector bone disease is the babesiosis, that is common in, dog, in dogs and cattle, scattered by red urine. Ticks still vector nerve sheep disease. Ticks vector anaplasmosis. We have also Orthodox mobata that vectors African swine fever. It's a soft tick. Here is a life cycle of African swine fever, but we shall see that this brown ear tick, this sorry, this tick, which is Orthodox mobata. It transport it vectored the disease from the wild pigs to our domestic pigs and results into African swine fever. African swine fever has no treatment and has no vaccine yet, which is successful. We will consider that these external parasites cause serious losses to our farmers within Uganda. Hence the need. Medicinal plants that have been used to prevent and control ticks in Uganda include we have neem tree. Neem tree is a, as a drachita indica and it contains the active ingredient called as a drachitin. In Uganda, people burn the dung, this, the dung from these cows, so that it also becomes so that it's also used as a, a repellent and it has been successful. One way of preventing or controlling the ticks is Putting this chicken within the pens so they can feed on these ticks. Pre always prevent your animals from feeding from bush areas because these bushes are always infested with these ticks. Treatment of these ticks is just by remaking a paste of green tobacco leaves, which we call Nicotiana tobacco. The active ingredient in nicotine and tobacco is nicotine. We apply this paste around the animal's body where the ticks are, and this treatment is applicable to all animals or animal species. Some communities are using what they call the old ingredient oil, and they smear it around the affected areas where the ticks are infested. And the results have been positive. This is how. The leaves of Azadrachita indica, the neem tree looks. 
like here then here is a leaf of the tobacco that they used in treatment of these ticks the second excellent passage is flea flea is common within dogs and poultry you see that it causes inching or irritation and really the animals we undergo reproduction because it's under all stress. These fleas are always attached to various parts. For example, in poultry, they are always found attached around the wattle, the comb, and around the eyes. The animal should scratch itself always and the swelling swell at the bite sites. For example, here we have a cock, but on its comb, we see like here, these are the lights, these are the fleas. And they are always surrounding the, the part of the eye within the poultry. How would we prevent a control flea? In Uganda, people use Mexican marigold, which is target smanta. The active ingredient is called target oil. And what they do, they make some brooms just from this whole plant of the target smanta. Then they sweep around the poultry houses. Some they burn. Two to three cages of the dry leaves of Mexican marigold within the animal boma. Some crush magad, which is soda ash, and sprinkle around the poultry houses. This is how Mexican marigold looks like. It contains dagaton. The botanical name is dagets minuta. We treat flea by taking one to two cages of azulajita indica by the seed, we pound the seed, we cook it until it's brown and sticky. We add water 0 0.5 liter to make a paste, then we squeeze that paste to extract the oil. So it's then that oil that we apply on the site where the flea is on the animal. This treatment applies on all animals or livestock. The third excellent parasite that is common in Uganda, in East Africa, is the lice. The lice is a small insect, it has no wings, but it causes irritation because it sucks blood, then the bites are painful. Lice is just mainly because of result of poor sanitation. When sanitation is poor within the poultry house, we shall see the infestation of these lice. Lice live within, live on, live just within the skin of the animals, and really they cause negative impacts. The sign is that there is different infestation. When I see that animals will be scratching, the animals will be anemic because of blood loss. We shall see wounds. Then the eggs, the presence of these eggs of the lice, they are always white. Then there is hair loss, especially within the poultry, whereby we see there is feathers being lost. Prevention and control of this life infestation in Uganda and South Africa people use neem tree, which is as a dragita indica, and they still use target smanuta. These two are important fly repellents. Treatment of these lice, we use alium sativum. Alium sativum is garlic. And what they do, you chop and then you crush these two bulbs of garlic, mix with four, four liters of water. Wash the liquid around the animals once a day. Some communities, like in Karamoja, they use camel urine, whereby they mix it with the salt soil and they make a paste that they smear around the animal's body. That's how Alium sativa looks like. And the active ingredient is called alcin, and the English name is garlic. Botanical name is Alium sativa. Why? Because uh, this natural. Drugs, we classify them based on the alphabetical order, that's one way, that's why we use the English name and either the Greek name. The other way we could use the, the chemical composition or we could use the pharmacological importance or the taxonomy if it's from a plant origin. We see the wood ash is also being used, they use also tickets manta to control this parasite. The other excellent passage is the sesame fly. Sesame fly it sucks blood from 
the livestock to supply the vectors the tree trepansom mm, parasite and it causes trepansomiasis which on the other side of humans it's called sleeping sickness meaning it could be zoonotic trepansomiasis affects also wildlife animals then the trypanosomiasis, we see that the sign of trypanosomiasis, the animal undergoes wasting by the muscles. We can see it decreases the body weight. It's a chronic disease. I'm sure it's a dose. Farmers, most farmers. For example, like here we could see, we have two cattle, but you can see really the leaves are really outside. And just imagine how much each of these animals would cost. We have this is a fly, that's the Gulosina species. Then this is a life cycle of how that disease spreads. This is camel because trips. We have various we have trepansomias bruce, we have the vivax, congolose, all. How do you prevent such a fly infestation? Here we use burning of the dry cow dung near within the animal boma it's a fly repellent some people use the river bean which we call sabania to saban they take one kg of these leaves they pound and they add little water they rub around the animal's body this is how the river bean looks like others still use as vegeta indica they remove the outer coat of the seed they pound it, crush until it's brown and sticky. They add water, make a paste, then they smear around the part that is invested by these flies. The other important external parasite in Uganda is mosquito. These mosquitoes, during rain season, they breed in high numbers. Mosquitoes vector diseases, for example, we have the Rift Valley fever. This is a valley fever is a genetic disease that can affect the livestock with the humans, then also the wild animals. Recently, one of the graduates from our university, after one month of graduating, he contracted he got this disease and really was a loss to the community. This is a life cycle. Of how Rift Valley occurs. You see that the Aedes mosquito it can either under vertical transmission that even its eggs would be infected. So it would be to produce a mosquito bite which is already infected. When this mosquito bites an animal, maybe the, the livestock or the wildlife which is infected, then comes to human, we can also transfer, transmit the disease. If it comes to the livestock, it can also transmit the disease. We see, for example, like here, there is rain, which is a predisposing factor for this disease. And you see the AIDS and the Clex mosquito. Then the livestock and the human being affected by the disease. How do you control mosquito infestation? This is through mixing targets minuta, these are 0.5 kgs with cow dung, we dry it under the sun and burn within the animal pens. This has worked. Other people use eucalyptus, this is also a fly, the parent, especially the mosquitoes. Then we can also use still the neem tree. We make a paste, then we smear. We have mites, this are common in poultry and dogs, they burn inside the skin, they cause conditions that we call mange. Mange is just because of the hair loss, the alopecia. Within poultry, we see that it spreads for pox. For example, if one of your bird is infected, is infected by fall pox, and it's, this mite might move from that bird to another bird to transmit that virus, the fall pox virus. This is a sign of mite infestation. You see the pressure that we are talking about. It's hair loss. For example, on this dog, we have severe, like this dog would undergo severe scratching. Then we have conditions that we call like hair 
hair bow. For example, maybe you consider your animal identifying some bow that are made just because of the hair, meaning the animal could try because of the itching to try to take that hair. How do you prevent and control mites through isolating these animals that are infested from the health ones? We control or we treat mites by use of camel urine. This is common in Kalamoja. They make they mix the camel urine with the camufra ethia, they heat steer and they make the paste. It's me around animals. The other external Parasite is the nozzle butterfly. This affects mostly we have sheep, which is Ostras ovis, then the camel, that's the species, Cephalopina titulata, that affects the camels. For nozzle butterfly, you see that the adult fly which will lay eggs within the nostrils of the animal. Within the nostril, there will be a larva, it will grow from the egg to become a larva. Then now the larva moves into the nose of the animal. This external parasite, the nose of butterfly, causes a serious sneezing, shaking of the head. It's really the animal suffers. Once the larva develops, it's, it's sneezed and develops into an adult. So, how do we treat and prevent this nose of butterfly? You see that in treatment, we use the sodium aqua, sodium incanum. We make paste. From that, so now we can then we squeeze little amounts in the nostrils. These are the signs you shall see. There will be white discharge from the nose, for example, this sheep. Then this is how that larvae looks like. This larvae is surely common within camels, and I've ever seen some. You see the animal try to sneeze and sneeze until that life comes out. It's because it is always inching. Treatment we have talked about Solanum Canum, whereby they crush the roots in little water, they make a solution, then they apply within the nostrils using a syringe. Some use the fruit and Solanum Canum, they press it a little without puncturing the skin, it's good they use it to the nostrils. This is how Solana mecanum, Sodom apple, because it's within the family of Solanaceae. Solanaceae, that's the family of this Sodom apple. Other people cry, they crush the fresh acacia with a spade. The roots they mix with water, then they pour the liquid within the nostrils. Because it's within the nostrils, that's where those nozobotol larvae are. We have the biting flies. These biting flies really they disturb these grazing animals. They bite. Really, we can see like here on the back. See, just imagine they are like even 20, but just in a small portion. But imagine they bite these animals. We can see like in this animal, it's not even stable, it's not even feeling okay. It's being disturbed. How can it graze? These biting flies are different. We have the stable fly, we have stomoxical citron, we have house flies, we have horn fly, we have face fly, and they cause various effects. For example, itching, we have wounds, we have bleeding, inflammation, hair loss, and then there's decreased production. This is a clear diagram illustrating those various biting flies. How do we prevent? We could use cow dung as a fly parent. We burn it within the animal boma. Still, we would get a positive result. Treatment of these biting flies we use as the Shita indica, and here it takes one to two cages of the fresh seed of the neem tree. We move the outer coat, then we pound. After pounding, we shall see we shall find the brown, then sticky. We mix it with water, making a paste. Then we shall squeeze that extract that we have made around the animal skin. Another one we use, like we crush in Africa, in Uganda, we use we crush 0.5 of adenium, which is a number. This is poisonous. So, if you're trying to use this, always have protective gear like gloves, and then wash the hands after, because this is adenium. Obesum is 
poisonous. All right, we have seen the external parasites. Then we have the internal parasites, which we refer to as the endoparasites. These are parasites that live inside the animal body. Whereby we have the round worms, then we have the flat worms. The flat worms, we have the tapeworm. Then the round worms, we have the hook. We have the lung worm. We have tapeworm. Ascaris. Ascaris is common within the pigs, chicken. We see that these worms cause various signs, clinical signs and symptoms. For example, we see this is what we call the bottle jaw. Bottle jaw there is always increase within the neck. There is an extension. It's a sign that there is there is presence or presence of, of these internal parasites. Hence, we need to do one. We have coughing, we have diarrhea, there's loss of hair, the, the hair control is rough, the belly is not extended or enlarged, and really we see various signs. So in treatment we use the zinc of snari. This is zinc of snari is the jinga. We pick the rhizome, then we take the capsicum. For this is the red pepper. So we take red pepper and then the jinga mixed with water, one liter, then we give the animal to drink as a dredge. This is the diagrammatic illustration of this capsicum, this is the red paper, then the active ingredient is capas, no it's this is the, how jinga looks like, zinc baofesnali, that's the botanical name. Some take two bulbs, this is of Alium sativa still to treat or deworm these animals. Others have used albezia, various species of albezia. They pick the bark, then they add water, they give it to the animal. This is used in cattle, sheep, and goats. We have liver flu infestation. This liver flu causes what you call partialisis. Partialisis, you see that this liver flu burrows into the liver and causes serious infection. Liver flu infestation is just within the cattle. That's where it's common. They have goats, sheep, and this is mostly where they graze within these wetlands. Because within the wetlands, we have the snails, and these snails, remember when the liver flu. It's growing, it will also undergo some development within the flu, within the snails. Hence, these pastures in this area are also infested or affected. Thereby, when an animal takes or eats that pasture, it will result into such conditions. You see, there's a life cycle here. For example, this is a snail that has this mycidium. The is that part of the flu that's just still evolving within the, within the snail, it develops, it undergoes sleep, it comes out as a saccharia. Then, the saccharia that is on the pastures, then now the animal takes it. When we humans eat the half cooked food, we also get infection. So, we have to take it serious. We can try to see some of the signs and symptoms that they will be wasting, loss of appetite, really, when the liver is affected, things don't always go good. How would we treat? We see that people are using soranam within Uganda, soranam in Kanam. They take two fruits, little they crush with limestone, they boil with water, then they give the animals a drench. This is the treatment that has been done in animals. Then the tick bone diseases. These tick bone diseases, we have talked about them. It's coast fever, ECF. We have talked about anaplasmosis, babesiosis, heart water, and really, it's a great loss to most of the farmers because most of the farmers, these tick bone diseases are common. Remember, we have no vaccines. And we are depending on these drugs, we don't know even resistance. Most ticks have developed ticks. I've evoked resistance to these 
drugs that we are using. Some people spray, but still there is no change. You spray today, you come back tomorrow as if you are you just helped the ticks to increase. <laughs> so that's why some farmers and some regions in the, in the pastoral areas for them they are mainly using these plants. This is the life cycle for example is that from the grass to go depending on the like, on the life cycle we have the one we have one host two hosts then three hosts depending on the life cycle one of the diseases that tick bone is the east coast fever species affected is mainly cattle it's transferred by the brown ear tick this is the typing error it's supposed to be brown ear tick east coast fever is caused by the terraria pava and is affected by the brown ear tick. It is a natural disease and severe within the young animals. We see the signs we see, which are always seen the swollen superficial leaf nodes, which are around the ear, which we call the parotid leaf nodes. There's always acclimation. There's fever. This temperature is always high. There's loss of appetite. How do you fit? In Africa, East Africa and Uganda, people use the vanonia and gladius, which is the aloe, alvella, and use some use. They do take the leaves and the roots of aloe vera, they mix with the river bean, which is sesabani and sesaban. They crush these leaves and they mix with one liter of water, and then they give the animal to drink. This is still the same. Others use sana mikanam, then Bangbena Uganda says a few seeds they crush, they mix with lime and water. They apply on the part where the animal is within the livestock. The other tick bones is hot water, species affected goats, sheep, and cattle. It's more severe in younger ones. The clinical signs are saying we have the nervous ones. For example, the animal move in cycles. It is caused by this varying atom. This is Amblyoma valingatum. It's a nice looking tick, really, if you look at it, but the results that it's called, it vectors, it results into a loss. Post mortem, we shall see that with the heart water, we shall see water within the pericardium. The membrane surrounding the heart, the water will be more. Treatment people have used Capascan Fontesis, which is the red paper. They take the fruits of the red paper and then they mix with that of sodium apple, which is Ranam Incanum. They pound them together, they mix with limestone, they add a little water, and then they make a paste. They apply where a tick has bitten. This treatment is a bit successful in cattle, sheep, and goats. Some use switch nose, they crush it, they boil for 30 minutes, they mix it with water, they cool again, then they form a solution. It's given to cattle twice for three days. The other one is anaplasmosis. So it's common in cattle, goats, sheep. The signs you see that the animal will undergo constipation. Always there's jaundice, then there's fever. It's sometimes qualified as the gallbladder disease. On postmortem, the gallbladder enlarges, is enlarged, then the spleen is red and dark. Another one is babesiosis. It's common in cattle and dogs. And it's caused by prot the protozoa is called Babesia species. For example, in cattle, it's Babesia bovis. Babesiosis is catalyzed by the red urine. Treatment we use the acacia for photo to treat, whereby we soak it in 1.5 liter of water for 12 hours. After that, we get the drench, then we give the animal. Repeat the treatment for the next day. Some. Then we have trypanosomiasis. We see the animal is undergoing wasting. The clinical signs we talk about this muscle wasting. We have always the hair is always dull, hair coat is always standing. Then this is the tissue supply that spreads the disease. We have the trypanosomiasis. I think trypanosomiasis is the life cycle. And see, this is the preparation that causes the disease. When teachers do that, human being, 
to undergo with endothelial cells and it will burst and seriously it will affect those nearby muscles. So within here, the sensor fly is a biological factor, is a biological vector. And the biological vector is that once the sensor fly takes this parasite, the parasite will undergo some development within it. That's why we call it a biological vector. Unlike the case of ticks, for example, in the tick bone diseases, for them they are mechanical. They take that part, for example, for ECF, they will take Tereria pava pava, but there will be nothing that will change or develop into the, the Tereria pava pava. So it, for ticks, have been always biological, they have been always mechanical vectors. In the sense of fly, in this case of trips, they are biological vectors. Treatment of Trebasomias in Uganda or East African region, people use acacia leaves whereby they crush then they soak it in water this is also five liter they sieve and then they drench they give the message to the animals this has been successful within the caramoja by the feed they give these animals the camels mostly thanks maybe you shall learn from there the other part of other diseases and other medicinal plants that they use. Kulak Altaric and Mosasas Channel.